This week I've been on the hunt, a hunt for some lesser known cryptids, but I did give myself some parameters. The first was as I said, it had to be a lesser known creature, the next, it needed to be plausible. Also, it had to have a parallel animal which is living today or once existed in the past. So I found two cryptid creatures that aren't as popular as the big hitters like the chupacabra, yeti or mothman. Let's explore these mysterious beasts and have some fun speculating on what they may be and if they even exist. So it's time for my top 2 little known cryptids. Let's take a look. Welcome to IF, videos on history and mystery. Hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you never miss a video again. The first cryptid I have for you is found in the lakes and rivers of the Emerald Isle, a creature of Irish folklore and a legend that is very plausible. It has no fantastical abilities, its appearance is reasonably normal and there are animals in other parts of the world that appear to be almost identical to some of the descriptions given for this cryptid. So what am I talking about? The Darabor or for the non-Gaelic speakers, the King of Lakes. So what is the Darabor? It could be said that this water dwelling cryptid is the kaiju of otter species, measuring in at 7 foot or more. Known as the King of Lakes, the Darabor is a vicious beast said to kill both people and animals, finishing off its victims by drinking their blood. The animal is often described as looking like both a dog and an otter. It's depicted in many pictures and stories as being half dog and half fish, hence the name Dorobjo, which can be translated to water hound. The creature has a long history in Ireland with many sightings. One of the more recent witness reports comes from 2003 when an Irish artist, Sean Corcoran, and his wife said they witnessed a Dorabor in Ome Island, Connemara, County Galway. His description was that of a large creature that was said to be big and black, made a haunting screech and could swim extremely fast along with having orange flipper like feet. These cryptids are often seen in pairs and in many of the old tales when someone is confronted with one of these water hounds, they often have to face off against its partner as well. This leads us into an actual animal behavior which could support the existence of the creature. Otters are generally monogamous and they may even mate for life. The otter is also a vicious predator. They may look furry and cute, but they are ferocious and cunning hunters. Otters are members of the mustelid or weasel family, which includes skunks, wolverines and the honey badger, an animal considered to be one of the toughest creatures on earth. There are 12 species of otters, 13 until the Japanese river otter was declared extinct in 2012, found all over the world except for Australia and Antarctica. The otter used to be commonplace in Britain but was sadly hunted to the brink of extinction. Hunting was banned in 1978 and since then the creatures are slowly making a comeback. These otters cannot explain the large size of the Darabol, but there is one species that could, the giant river otter. Although a little smaller than our cryptid, if we allow a little wriggle room for the gilding of stories, then they do come close at lengths of nearly 6 feet. The problem with this species is that they are found deep in the forests of Brazil, Venezuela and Peru, so how could they have arrived in Ireland? We could speculate that like the big cats seen around Great Britain, they may well be escaped pets, but this, I feel, does not explain the earliest of sightings. There has been a number of supersized otter species found all over the world. A giant otter roamed southwestern China 6 million years ago. Fossils show an animal that weighed more than 50 kilograms and was the size of a wolf. Sounds like a match, but once again we have the problem with the location. The fossil record for otters is extremely poor, so maybe a species of giant otter has been just about holding on and, as the animals are so private, been hiding right under our noses. Maybe a giant otter species in Europe could explain a few of the other lake monster stories. Until more evidence is found, we can but speculate. The next cryptid is a little stranger with an appearance 
that will need to be picked apart for the creature to make more sense. The Groot Slang or Great Snake It is the legendary monster that is said to live deep in the caverns of the Rixtevild, a mountainous desert region of northwestern South Africa. In local mythology, Groot Slangs are said to be primordial creatures with an unusual appearance. They are comprised of the head and front body, including legs, of an elephant with the rear and tail of the beast being that of an enormous serpent. The legends tell that when the earth was created, the Groot Slangs were all apparently destroyed, but according to this legend, some may have survived and retreated to the deepest caves of the Northern Cape Province. This story reminds me of the tales of the Naga found in Indian and Asian folklore. Could there be a connection? Tales of enormous tusk snakes are probably inspired by real-life sightings of enormous pythons that live in the same area or maybe a larger creature. Myths of giant snakes have been told globally, from the winged serpent Coetzacotl of Aztec legend to the Norse mythology and Yermaganda. Snakes have long been entwined with human history and our inbuilt fear of the serpents has shaped the image of the snake. But are there any giants that could match up to the legendary Glutslangs? Currently the biggest snakes in the world are the anaconda, found in tropical South America, weighing in at 550 pounds with an average length of about 15 feet, though some individuals have grown to be as long as 30. The second largest, growing up to 30 feet long, the reticulated python found in southeastern Asia and East Indies is the longest snake in the world. These giants have an average weight of 250 pounds, but the largest known specimen in existence weighs in at a whopping 350 pounds. But how about Africa? What's the largest species found there? The African rock python is similar in many ways to the Southeast Asian cousin, albeit a little smaller. The sixth largest snake species in the world, specimens may approach or exceed 6 meters or 20 foot. This is not enough to make them Groot Slangs, this excluding a larger, undiscovered species which may live deep in the caves. The largest snake that we have evidence for that ever lived is a member of the python family, the Titanoboa. 58 million years ago, a few million years after the fall of the dinosaurs, everything was hotter, wetter and bigger than it is today. The world was on overdrive, more rain, more heat and bigger creatures. Rivers had turtles with shells twice the size of manhole covers and crocodiles that were more than 15 feet in length. It was a time of monsters and in this world, the Titanoboa thrived. A snake more than 40 feet long and weighing more than a ton, this giant serpent looked like something like a modern day boa constrictor but behaved more like today's water dwelling anaconda. It was a swamp denizen and a fearsome predator able to eat any animal that caught its eye. So there is an historical species that may provide proof a giant undiscovered snake could be behind the legend. but. I still have to question the idea of the front section being more like an elephant. The tusk could be explained as large fangs, the elephant like ears, a hood like that of a cobra. But legs? That's a little harder to explain away. The absence of legs pretty much is a defining characteristic of a snake. So could the Groot Slangs be giant lizards? Currently the biggest lizard found in Africa is the rock monitor, large mature males can reach sizes of 6 feet. This reptile is adapted to survive almost anywhere and does like to take refuge in caves and holes. Could a larger lizard exist with the same habits? Biologist Alison Murray and Rob Holmes found the vertebra of a 33 million year old African lizard fossil, its cousin being the Komodo dragon which have only been around for some 700,000 years. This ancient species shared many characteristics with the modern Komodo, but was larger and this is when we might find a link to the legendary Groot Slangs. It is said that the Groot Slangs would rise up before they attacked, showing their front legs and tusk. Now picture, if you will, a Komodo dragon fighting. They raise themselves up in the same manner. Could this be what the people saw? A startled creature rising up, 
ready to fight. They then framed the picture in a context of animals they knew, hence the comparison to a combination of snake and elephant. What do you think of my two theories? Are these creatures nothing more than legend, or could there be some truth to their existence? Let me know what you think in the comments below. As always, if you like what I do here on the channel, hit that like button and give it a share. Thanks so much for watching, I'll see you next time.